Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Krop Feinstein Castle. Krop Feinstein Castle is positioned precariously on the edge of a vertical rock face in Switzerland. It's the very definition of a cliff castle, blending so seamlessly with the stone you might not even see it if you walked along the valley below and looked up. And although the castle must have been extremely difficult to build, requiring skilled laborers and a lot of planning, very little is known about it. Dating timbers found on the site suggest it was constructed around the year 1312, and yet that's about as far as the history of this place goes. Krop Feinstein Castle was built on a very narrow overhanging rock shelf. There is a small natural ledge from which the builders were able to make a foundation. They used what little space they had to build a towering castle against the cliff as a fortification for a local distinguished family. We don't know who that family was, although historians think it was the Kropfenstein family that died out in the 15th century. They must have felt extremely safe inside their castle's walls. You couldn't exactly march an army up the side of the cliff to attack the place, making it easily defendable. It originally had three stories, living quarters, a kitchen, and multiple rooms for the family. Nowadays, though, it's a sad ruin, so you have to use your imagination to think of what it would have looked like. Number 9. The Tomb of Jesus In 1980, about three miles south of the Old City in East Jerusalem, something shocking was discovered during the construction of an apartment building. In the neighborhood of East Talpiot, a stone-cut tomb was found with a bone box inscribed, Jesus, Son of Joseph. The tomb also contained the ossuaries, boxes containing the bones of the dead, of Mary, Jesus' mother, and Mary Magdalene. And as if finding all three of these famous biblical figures in one place wasn't enough, another ossuary was discovered with the inscription, Judah, Son of Jesus. This was a monumental discovery and one that the church quickly swept under the rug. The suggestion here was that the family tomb of Jesus had been found. Jesus, his mother, Mary Magdalene, his wife, and his son. It's now called the Talpiot tomb, and the church has never confirmed the bodies found within as belonging to Jesus and his family. Director James Cameron produced a controversial documentary about the tomb in 2007. He and journalist Simka Jacobovici claimed the tomb was the burial place of Jesus of Nazareth and his extended family. If true, this would be proof that Jesus did not rise from the dead. Instead, he was a prophet who preached the word of God and then was buried peacefully with his family. What do you think? Was this discovery real or just a hoax? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Australia's Bermuda Triangle Off the coast of Western Australia, there is a mysterious patch of ocean that's been compared to the Bermuda Triangle. This strip of coastline is home to at least 1,600 shipwrecks, along with tales of piracy and intrigue. The coastline of Western Australia is 8,000 miles long. Starting around the 1600s, it became a burial ground for vessels. Explorers and merchants from Britain and Portugal, even the Netherlands, crashed their ships here frequently. The coastline was part of a sailing route from Europe to Indonesia, but it was extremely treacherous. Even today, the waters are still known for their natural booby traps, such as the shallow reefs, sea cliffs, and unpredictable weather. According to National Geographic, the first recorded shipwreck was 400 years ago. A ship called the Trial sank near Karatha town in 1622 while on its way to Indonesia. They hit some rocks, over 100 crew members were swallowed by the angry sea, and the vessel was lost. The reason the coastline has been compared to the Bermuda Triangle is because of the other 1,599 ships lost here, not all of them so easily explainable. The SS Kumbana, a luxury passenger ship with over 150 wealthy patrons aboard, entered a swirling cyclone in 1912 and was never seen again. It's one of the greatest maritime mysteries. Number 7. Mount Doom an astronaut aboard the International Space Station recently snapped an image of one of the craziest-looking places in the world. It's called Mount Ruapehu, and it's the largest active volcano in New Zealand. It was also the very volcano used for filming Mount Doom in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. That makes it a legend in its own right, and one of the most fascinating places on Earth. The volcano can be found at the heart of Tongariro National Park. 
At its summit is a hydrothermal lake over 9,000 feet above sea level. Inside the heart of the volcano is a magma chamber that keeps the lake between 59 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like a natural hot tub, only extremely acidic because volcanic gases dissolve into the water and make it toxic. The real-life Mount Doom is one of the most potentially dangerous things we know about. Researchers are constantly monitoring the hydrothermal lake for any potential change in activity. In 2021, researchers saw that the temperature of the water dramatically spiked, causing them to upgrade the volcanic unrest level. It hasn't exploded yet, but if Mount Doom ever goes off, things could be very bad for the human race. And now for number 6. But first, it's shout-out time! I wanted to say a big thank you to Brandon McAllister and Darren Haig for supporting this channel. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! Number 6. The Pucherlock Cave Castles The Pucherlock Cave Castles in Austria can be found hiding in dark caverns about 75 feet above the Muir Valley floor. According to tradition, Shalon Castle was built in the smaller of the two caves on the Pleskites Mountain. A knight eloped with a Saxon princess, took refuge in the cave, and together they built a mighty fortification hiding in the shadow depths. It's a romantic story, but one that might not be entirely true. There's another local legend that says the castle is haunted by a man who had no shadow. He lived in the ruins of the castle and kidnapped young girls on moonless nights. Not much is known about the true construction of the castle, only that it was first mentioned in 1181. It later came under the ownership of the Lords of Sauron in 1472. Then, in the next century, it was abandoned and left to ruin. The second castle is Lueg Castle, and it occupies the larger of the two caves on the face of the cliff. It was built as a mighty fortress just inside the mouth of the cave in the 12th century, and even improved upon in the 14th century. But just like its twin on the other side, Lueg Castle's history is shrouded in mystery. Legend has it that a criminal gang took up residence inside and largely destroyed it before the place was permanently abandoned. Number 5. The Valley of the Golden Mummies in 1966, famed Egyptologist Zahi Hawass and his team discovered a gigantic burial site in the Bahariya oasis of Egypt. They came across an astounding collection of 250 mummies, in what was quickly dubbed the Valley of the Golden Mummies. The mummies date back about 2,000 years, to the time when Egypt was ruled by the Greeks, then the Romans. After the initial discovery, following several more seasons of excavations, the total number of mummies found reached over 10,000. This is one of the most incredible places in Egypt that nobody has ever heard of. The Valley of the Kings is certainly something to behold. But the Valley of the Golden Mummies is unprecedented for the sheer scope of burials that took place here. Even more shocking is that the mummies were in remarkably good condition when they were found. Some were decorated in gilded golden masks, their sarcophagi decorated in scenes of gods and goddesses, and some wearing masks of ancient gods like Anubis, god of mummification. All the decoration was a big shock because such treatment would have cost a significant amount. That suggests the population here was wildly wealthy. Around the time the mummies were buried, Egypt was home to about 7 million people. There were likely around 30,000 people living out in the isolated Bahariya oasis, and for some reason, they were all insanely rich. Experts have guessed it could be because they were producing wine and selling it around the world. Number 4. The Ancient Religion of Lake Titicaca 1,200 years ago, Lake Titicaca in Bolivia was seen by the locals as the center of the universe. A reef in the middle of the lake would grow to become a kind of natural treasure chest containing all the most valuable possessions of the Tiwanaku people who live nearby. In 2013, underwater archaeologists uncovered a cache of sparkling treasure that had been hiding over 12 centuries. It took six years of research, but scientists finally learned the truth of the treasure in the lake. It appears to be evidence of a mysterious religion that allowed the Tiwanaku to become the dominant kingdom in the region. The treasure was found by archaeologists near the Island of the Sun, which is home to many sacred sites. The Tiwanaku used the island as a ritual hub, 
building temples and altars and other important structures starting around 500 AD. Researchers believe it was the Tiwanaku's control over Lake Titicaca that allowed them to hold such influence over other civilizations in Chile, Peru, and Bolivia. This is because scientists have never found evidence of military might. The Tiwanaku likely didn't have a standing army, or at least not a very good one. Instead of fighting with force, they dominated other civilizations through religion. Think of it like how the Vatican controls so much of the world even though they have practically zero military might. The Tiwanaku likely did this by creating their very own religion with Lake Titicaca at its center. The lake was considered the birthplace of humanity, and over generations, they turned it into the most important place in the world. Researcher Jose M. Capriles from Penn State University says the Tiwanaku people became the authority over the institution that governed behavior. They came up with a scare tactic. If you behaved nicely, you got to be immortal. But if you were bad, the great deity would punish you for all eternity. This ownership of a new and powerful religion helped the Tiwanaku to expand while giving them significant political power. At least it did until they suddenly collapsed around 1000 AD. Number 3. The Catacombs of Domitila Twisting underneath the streets of Rome are over 10 miles of dark and creepy passages that make up the Catacombs of St. Domitila. 10 miles and 4 levels, with passages stacked one on top of the other like an underground ant's nest. These catacombs are underneath the Eternal City, filled with roughly 26,000 tombs from some of the earliest converts to Christianity in the world. Up until the 2nd century AD, Christians were not allowed to be buried inside the borders of Rome. They had to bury their dead in communal burial grounds outside the city limits. This did not sit well with Christians as they began to amass power. And besides, burial space was becoming a bit of an issue. Underground tombs needed to be dug anyway because there just wasn't enough room on the surface for all the dead people accumulating in Rome. It was cheaper to dig deep tunnels and fill them with bodies while charging the families for burial plots. The catacombs got their name from the Domitila family, which included Emperor Vespasian, Emperor Titus, and Emperor Domitian. The family was who initially ordered a series of catacombs to be dug in the first place. Up until the 5th century AD, the catacombs were used primarily for burying Christians. Non-Christian members of society were typically okay with being cremated, which was more economical and didn't take up much space. But by around 500, pretty much everyone in Rome was Christian. The catacombs were full and sealed, then went undiscovered until 1593. They were lost all throughout the Dark Ages. And in case you were wondering, the catacombs do still hold thousands of bodies. Number 2. Rocky Gari Rocky Gari was built by the Harappan civilization, also known as the Indus Valley Civilization. It dates back 5,000 years to the cradle of humanity, making it one of the earliest major metropolises in history. It was first excavated in 1998, then again in 2001 and more recently in 2013 to 2016. What archaeologists have found throughout their investigations is that Rocky Gari was an extremely advanced city. It was planned well to begin with, and it may have been the largest of all the Indus Valley cities. It boasted very impressive architecture. The houses had multiple floors, there was an efficient drainage system, houses had kitchens, and it was likely a major trading center of the ancient world. We know the Indus Valley civilization originated in what is now Pakistan. They dominated the region from between 3300 to 1300 BC for 2,000 long years. The Indus Valley, Egypt, and Mesopotamia were the three biggest civilizations at the dawn of the civilized world. Rakigari and their other cities may have had up to 60,000 citizens each. Researchers believe it was unexpected climate change that brought an end to their civilization. The climate grew colder and drier, starting around 1800 BC. The monsoon weakened, and suddenly there wasn't enough water to sustain the population. The city of Rakigari was abandoned and lost. Number 1. The Temple of Hercules Not much remains these days of the great Temple of Hercules at Agrigento in Sicily. 
The temple was constructed 2,600 years ago, likely as a monumental shrine to the famous Greek hero Hercules. In the 6th century BC, the temple stood in the ancient city of Akragas. It was part of the Hill of the Temples, less than a mile from the Temple of Concordia, which is even more famous. The Temple of Concordia is considered one of the best-preserved Greek temples anywhere in the world, with almost all its columns still holding up the original roof. However, the Temple of Hercules is a mystery, because we don't know how grand it was, who commissioned it, or if it was even really dedicated to Hercules. The ruins suggest it once possessed six columns on each facade, with 15 along the sides. There are only about eight columns standing now, and none of them are in very good shape. The only reason it was even given the name Hercules was because of an ancient mention by the Roman historian Cicero. He wrote of a great temple in the area, with a statue of Hercules so heroic, people would come from far and wide just to see it. The statue has never been found, nor have its remnants, and there are no other historical mentions of the temple to say what it may have been used for. Thanks for watching! Which of these strange and mysterious ancient places would you like to visit if you could? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon. Bye!